I just thank God for everyone in this building. I thank God for every person in this place. Father, we just lift you up today in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We're coming to your presence with joy and gladness. We come expecting to hear your voice today, Lord, and let the people hear your voice today in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for the grace upon our lives in this ministry to do your will here in the earth. We declare you're doing great things through this ministry. We thank you for every event coming up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we have events each month for the next three months, special events, and we just thank you that everyone can see them online. Glory to God. Well, I'm excited. We're in the middle of a fast, and it's always interesting in the middle. There's always something going on in the middle of what God's up to. Amen? It's, God is doing great things, and uh, he had me talking to him talking to him about you know the fast and who we are in him and what we're doing and even though you know in Matthew chapter 3 and I'll get you to turn there in your Bible we see that Jesus was baptized in verse 13 he was baptized in in the in the Jordan by John and John was going oh I can't do this and and Jesus no we got to suffer all righteousness everything has to be done right and uh, so they did. He said, okay. And he came up and a couple of things happened. We, um, John saw the Holy Spirit come upon Jesus as a dove. And he heard the Father say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And we see the Trinity in that. But there's so much more in that because as soon as Jesus was what baptized, filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit did something very interesting. It says in verse 4, it says, And he led him up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I thought that was a strange thing. You know, here, here Jesus is all of a sudden, he's acknowledged, he's baptized. He's filled with the Spirit. He's acknowledged by the fa our Father in heaven. And there's an audible voice of God speaking. And what happens? He gets led by the Holy Ghost to be tempted of the devil. He'd gone into the wilderness 40 days. In 40 days, he ate no food, it says. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't fast the mornings or the afternoons. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And afterwards, it says he hungered. He was a little hungry. Hallelujah. In the scriptures, we see that he was tempted of the enemy. And in the middle of this fast, that in what we're in, there will be temptations of the enemy. But I want to encourage you today that God is with you and he will give you the right words to uh, use as a sword in the spirit to cut down the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. I praise God for that. And it goes through the temptation. And I'm not really going to go through that. There's been lots of teaching on the temptations that Jesus went through. But it suffice to say that um, Jesus was te tempted of the devil. It's real. He was. And so don't think it's strange that in the middle of the fast you're going going to go through stuff. But we see in verse 11, it says, Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Glory to God. So we know that the angels came and helped him out. Praise God. But I want to talk about uh, the next part. Just I, I want to go through uh, how Jesus came back in the fullness of the Spirit. When he came back out of this 40-day fast, out of being tempted, out of being tried, of, out of being tested by the enemy, and he used the sword of the Spirit and he kept the fast, what happened is he came back in the fullness of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And power. Glory to God. Let's take a look at the scriptures here. Let's see. Let's go turn my page back here. Find the exact wording where it is. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to Luke chapter 4 for that. I like that part. Same thing, but I like Luke's word, how he phrases it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, okay, so then he, um, Jesus returned in verse 14, verse uh, Luke 3, 3, 14 rather. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through 
all of the region about, and he taught in their synagogues and being glorified of all. Everybody was real happy. And then he came to Nazareth, okay, where he had been brought up, his hometown, as was his custom was, and he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now the Amplified says that he, he had a, ser a teaching series. He was teaching a, sort of like a series, and I thought that was interesting. So he, they knew him. They saw him before preaching and teaching. But now Jesus has come back in the fullness of the power. The fullness of the Holy Ghost and the power of God. Amen? And, and well, okay. And, and there was delivered upon him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is so important because this is a picture of you and I. Amen? This is a picture of you and I. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of our Lord. And uh, that's the season we're in is we're to preach the acceptable to preach the acceptable year of our Lord. Like this is the time that those things are manifesting in our lives. And many churches don't preach that. Many don't believe that there's healing. Many of them are not reaching the poor. Not, uh, the brokenhearted haven't been healed. The recovering of sight to the blind. This is, you know, I, I remember praying for a woman who was blind and she got her sight back when I was in India. It was so amazing. And, um, you know, God says, this is a time. The kingdom of God is at hand right now. Glory to God. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Those have been bruised by whatsoever. Well, God is in this place right now. And he, I just want to encourage you in your fasting and in your prayer time that the power of the Holy Ghost is not unleashing you. It's already there, but you become very aware of the Spirit. You become very close to the Spirit. This is a way of getting closer to the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to tell you, hell may break out against you, but I want to tell you, all heaven is for you. The host of heaven, the heavenly host, the angels of God, have been released, unlocked, and sent forth into your life as you have embarked on this fast. This is a set time of the Lord, and we need to understand how important these times of fastings are. Amen. God is leading you in this time of fasting and prayer, and it's for your profit. God doesn't need, this isn't to profit God, this is to profit you. Hallelujah. This is for your profiting. He has is, he is designed it. God is leading you in this fast for your family. He knows what your family needs. He's leading you in this fast because your family needs you to fast for them. They may never fast in their lifetime. They may, they may not. But uh, God is leading you to fast for them. God is leading you also to fast for your church. Your, ch your church will grow together when you fast together. Not only when you pray together, but when you fast together. When there's a corporate fast, it's God's plan for your increase as the body of Christ, individually and corporately. There's a, a corporate anointing that's released when we fast together. Hallelujah. God is actually leading you to fast for your nation. This fast is bigger than just for you personally. It's bigger than you, us corporately or for our families. But it's also time that we need to fast for our nation. Hallelujah. This is a God-ordained time to profit us in every area of our lives. You see, God wants us to have a victory. And not just one victory, many victories. God wants us to live a victorious life. And many times we're not living a victorious life. And uh, when we fast and pray, I know every time I fast and pray, God's done tremendous breaks, breakthroughs. We've seen this in Isaiah 58. Maybe we should go take a look there for a minute. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah 58. I'm going to look at this just briefly. In verse 5, it says, Is this, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? 
Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? And this is a fast. I'm, I'm going to verse 6 now. And I want to take a look at the scripture specifically. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. That ye may break every yoke. Hallelujah. So we see in the fast, this is what happens. The, um, we, um, the, we loose the bands of wickedness. There's wickedness in this world, and there's some people who have besetting sins, and they can't get free of them. But by fasting, we loose these bands of wickedness. We undo heavy burdens. There may be some burdens in your life, some weights that the enemy has placed on you. God, at this time, is what God wants in the fast, is for heavy burdens to be removed from your life. And to let the oppressed go free. Free from oppression. God wants you free from oppression. And that you break every yoke. Every yoke. There's yokes people have on their life that the enemy has placed upon them. Heavy burdens, heavy yokes. That uh, it's like a task. When you have a yoke on, it's a task, master. What it does is uh, uh, an oxen wears a yoke for a reason. To pull a weight. To do some work. And the enemy puts evil yokes on people to do their work, but God wants these yokes removed so that you're free because he says that his yoke is easy, it is light, it's not burdensome, it's not this horrible weight. God wants us free, hallelujah. Amen. And it, um, it goes in verse 7, this is not this uh, to deal thy bread to the hungry, in other words, share food with those who are hungry, and that thou shalt bring the poor that are cast out into your house, and when you see us the naked, thou will cover them, and you will hide not yourself from thine own flesh. So, in other words, you, we don't have to hide away from our family, but let's take care of the poor. Let's help those who are less fortunate, who don't have a place to stay even. He says, and, and these are some of the results that will happen. When you call on the Lord, he shall answer you. You shall cry, and he shall say, here I am. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, and, but this is what you need to do. You should take away the, amidst the yoke from you, putting up forth of the finger. In other words, pointing and, and criticizing people and speaking vanity. In other words, things that have no thing, no substance. Um, praise God. But God wants you to um, follow after him. Let's go down to verse 10. And it says, If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity. So in other words, you may have been in obscurity, but God says, I'm going to raise you up and, I'm going to, and your light's going to shine. Hallelujah. Personally, for your family, for your church, and for your nation. You're going to rise up out of obscurity by fasting and praying. Hallelujah. And thy darkness will be as a noonday. In other words, the light of the glory of God will shine upon you in great ways. Amen. The Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and, and make fat thy bones. In other words, the uh, blessing, the richness of God will be upon you. And you'll be like a watered garden. Ever seen a dried out garden? Doesn't look too healthy or flourishing. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Glory to God. That's a good word. Amen. So God has orchestrated this weapon. We see why. We see that it's a weapon that he has created. It is a supernatural prophetic process to give you dunamis, that is power, and awaken your prophetic senses to fulfill your destiny, to fulfill your destiny and the destiny of others. Amen? A fast isn't just for you alone. You were on his mind. When we started this fast, we think it was our great idea. It was God's great idea. Hallelujah. It is supernatural. It is supernatural. It is supernatural. We're not doing things in the natural. We're going to the supernatural. We may be pushing away from the table and saying no to food, but we're saying yes to Jesus Christ. You see, it is our, it's our free will. It's our choice to fast. It is our choice. Amen. 
You are agreeing with God when you choose to fast. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to let you know it's totally within your God-given ability to complete this fast. God has not left you, but he has proven you. He's with you every step of this fast. And as we trust and rely on God in this process, we shall have great victory. I declare that today. We shall have great victory today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Even as we are fasting, God is sharpening the tools of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and the weapons of warfare. Hallelujah. Amen. We can use the oil of the, the anointing oil. And at the end of this fast, we're going to anoint y'all with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Afresh. Going to break open the oil. Hallelujah. And tools sometimes need to be sharpened, actually. Sometimes they get dull with use. And sometimes they become rusty or forgotten. And that fast is a great way to put us in remembrance of, you know, uh, speaking God's word, releasing the oil, amen? Decreeing, declaring, all the different things that we have given us. He's given us the ability to bind and to loose, amen? To consecrate ourselves to him. And uh, to use uh, the fruit of the spirit, things like self-control, is something that is magnified in a fast because you're. Uh, and what happens? It actually gives you dominion over your body. When you fast, you gain dominion over your body, and you need that to pray for yourself. As a matter of fact, you need dominion over your body. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah. When you choose to fast and yield to the Holy Ghost who is in, not only in you, but for you, going before you in this fast. You are siding with the creator of the universe. Good side to be on. You're siding with him. You're on his side, you know, and whose hand is upon you for your penultimate help and breakthrough. Penultimate means the highest, the highest help, the best help. He's here for us. So in this fast, it's going to be a time of great breakthrough, great change. Hallelujah. And um, God is fortifying each and every one of us. Now, I don't know about you, but there's some things I want to pray for. Hallelujah. There's some people I want to pray for. And so in this next time, in this next few minutes, we're just going to praise God and give God glory. And we're just going to start our prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.